This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we are at Tangen and we're gonna do a range test of Audi A6 e-tron. This is Quattro and also in the Avant version, which should be one of the more popular uh, versions in Norway. So I want to know how efficient it is. Uh, can it match the ID7 GTX, for example? Well, okay, let's see. So, uh, well, it is a bit windy today, but at least it should be nice and warm. So I have the car seat with me. Shouldn't matter too much. Maybe it adds another 15 kilograms of weight. Well, okay, so as you hear, wait for the car to start up. Uh, we have 98%, it's not too relevant. We will measure the consumption. And here, the battery is at 27 degrees Celsius, and the route is going to be from here, Tongan, north. Wait, huh? what did I? Didn't pan anything there. North here, and then back again. So that's a, what, 88 kilometer loop? Okay, yeah, let's go. Let's check the weight, the front axle. We have to deduct around 20 kilograms. Uh, 11.80, okay. And the whole car, 2,460. Hmm. Okay, we're on the move and we do the 120 kilometers per hour test first. We have to cruise at 123 to match 120 GPS speed. And then we'll be using efficiency mode to try to get the most uh, out of the battery, but uh, I think it shouldn't matter because, you know, in efficiency mode, it will just run the rear motor. So the car is already being efficient as possible, almost regardless of which mode we use. Mm, I can't see any flag. Yeah, there, there, there's a flag, okay. We have some crosswind and some uh, slight headwind, but it's a nice day today, 16 degrees Celsius, so that should give us good results. I'm expecting around 220 watt hour per kilometer. All right, we consume 213 watt hour per kilometer, and this car under port distance by 0.8%, so it's around 211 then. Mm, not too bad. Okay, same route, this time 93 kilometers per hour, 90 GPS speed. We always check that for every car we test. And then I well, just go to Rutsada again. Wait, what's the temperature? Yeah, it's still stable, 15.5 degrees over here. Battery heated up slightly, but uh, yeah, also quite stable, 28 degrees Celsius. And it's still using the rear motor when we cruise. So this car has a standard sound system from Audi, so no Bango Ulusen here. So how good is it then? Let's try. Hmm. Okay, there's a mid phase there. Fairly nice and clear, but I feel like it's not as crisp as the Bang Ulufsen. And also it lacks that deep bass in the Bang Ulufsen. Hmm. I don't like that it fades in when you change song. It should come instant. But that's just a software thing. Um, actually the bass Bass sounds a bit overwhelming, but it lacks that deep bass also here. Fairly linear though. I feel like it's missing some presence in the mid and high tones. Okay, now I'm gonna listen for some rattling, skip a bit here. Rattling in the doors. Nope, not at all, because this is German Auto. Okay, last song. I mean, there's still some bass here, but it just, when you hear it side by side with, with a Bang Wurzen, you will hear how deep the Bang Wurzen is. So yeah, I listened to the sound system before. I mean, it, it sounds okay, but I feel like it's, it's not as, as detailed as the higher end. Okay, it's quite expensive, the <laughs> Bang Wurzen. But I mean, overall, I mean, I'll probably give this, um, I'm not sure, six, six or seven. But uh, some other songs I listen to, I don't have it here in the, in the collection. 
the, the bass sounds a bit boomy. I'm also okay. Let me tell you something here. What about uh, clipping? Okay, skip to the most intense part here. Okay, okay, I'm gonna crank up the volume. Okay, even though it's a poor man's sound system, it actually sounds okay. There is maybe some clipping and some distortion when you crank it up, but uh, surprisingly good. Yeah, so, right, I think six or seven out of 10. Okay, let's test how well this car can toast. We have slight headwind today, so that's a disadvantage, but um, yeah, slick and aerodynamic station wagon, right? Let's see what the weight till we regen there and then I want to go in neutral for the maximum coasting effect and of course we go as close as possible to the truck in front before we oh, gently oh, Audi style tailgating oh yeah and actually here will be Audi style <laughs> tailgating okay we're picking up speed but will it be enough well let's find out come on get down get down I want to hug the left lane now. Come on, go schnell. Can we hit 120 kilometers per hour? Oh, we're going at barely legal speeds right now. Go, 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 go. I mean, it's relatively heavy, right? So that uh, mass we have has an advantage when we go downhill because we convert. Uh, well, we are actually kinetic energy. It's potential energy that goes into kinetic energy and then yeah stays there rather than regening it into electricity okay now it flattens out a bit but we can still maintain over 90 kilometers per hour i wonder if the the asphalt is getting rougher and there's more rolling resistance over here trying to avoid this area here you can hear it's noisier that try to ninja it and go here well, I, I could go here, maybe. There, there, oh, then it becomes really quiet. Oh yeah, I can feel like glide better. Just have to try to glide behind this Audi as far as possible. Oh, I'm losing speed again. Uh oh, losing speed. Why well, could glide pretty far? All right, right around here. There, wait, there, whoa, okay. I say that is approved, but um, not as good as the best, which is actually an SUV. I don't know why, but uh, it was an MEB platform. It was a Skoda Enya Coupe. Maybe it was nice and hot that day. Maybe we had tailwind. Maybe we had more aerodynamic rims, but uh, however, seems like the MEB platform is better than the Audi platform remember what I guess called uh, they seem to be beating or matching uh, this Audi also in 1000 km challenge whoa, 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 what heck is going on here dude why are the fossil cars driving so slow you have unlimited range in your TDI well it's a woman okay maybe she wants to save uh, the diesel uh, that is a possibility however oh, sold from the 90 test 151 watt hour per kilometer well correctly it is 150 watt hour per kilometer wow that is good for all-wheel drive 428 horsepower without boost so based on the test today we can get 625 kilometers of range and it's not even that hot outside okay 16 degrees celsius but uh, yeah and also when we go 120 kilometers per hour we can get 445 kilometers of range so you know in Norway, if you go in the Norway, it means that you have to drive uh, three and a half to four hours before you take a break on the motorway stretch. And then, uh, well, if you want to try to empty the battery going on the B roads, it could take something like eight hours, actually eight to nine hours before you need to charge if you go that deep. Uh, but this should be quite good, you know, but uh, it's still not the 662 kilometers of claim range. So in that regard, I feel like maybe Audi is a bit uh, optimistic with the range. When I did the Sunday drive, I managed to get uh, quite low consumption and then I achieved around 660 kilometers of range. 
But yeah, uh, other cars, so they seem to be uh, maybe more realistic when it comes to range. But I mean, we are talking about over 600 kilometers of range here, so it's still plenty of range. And then now we are charging an IOTI and it goes blistering fast. So uh, you can top up for 15 minutes and then you're back on the road for another three to four hours. Yeah. So all right, I think that's gonna be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.